Dr. Miller and Mr. Michaud for allowing me to participate in today's hearing. And special thanks to my colleague from Arizona, Ms. Kirkpatrick, who represents our state's veterans so well on this committee. Um, I want to thank all of today's panelists for joining us. In particular, thank you to Daniel's parents, Howard and Jean, for being here. We've worked together quite closely since learning of Daniel's suicide, and it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you again today. Unfortunately, Daniel's story and the story of the other young men who committed suicide is just all too familiar in our country, and 22 veterans a day are still um, committing suicide, even after we have heard the tragedies of the young men who lost their lives here and their brothers all across this country. And as we heard from Mr. Waltz, Congress has addressed this issue before, has passed legislation before, has said they were going to fix it before, and yet the problem has not only not gotten better, it's gotten worse. Um, I've heard a lot of testimony today about ideas to actually reform the system and make it better. The HIPAA issue, I think, is one that the committee would agree needs to be addressed. But I'm particularly interested in the pilot program that Sergeant Rensselaer participated in. And my question um, to Dr. and Jean Summers would be about Daniel. Daniel's experience at the Phoenix VA, like many, many veterans' experience at the Phoenix VA, was one of lack of concern, lack of care, lack of follow through, and a discombobulated system that didn't allow veterans to get the care they needed. In particular, one of the struggles Daniel faced was as an individual who had served in classified service, he was unable to participate in group therapy um, because he was not able to share the experiences he experienced um, while in service. And yet, at the Phoenix VA, he was unceremoniously put in to group therapy and when requested, was not able to get that care. Um, and of course, as we know, he took his own life as a result of being unable to get that care. The medical home model, I believe, in the private community has provided an opportunity to create patient-centered care and allow, vet and allow civilians to get the care they need in one home easily that's centered directly on their needs. While the pilot program in Washington was ended uh, because of, well, I, I don't understand why. They said they didn't have enough money for it, which I think is outrageous and a horrible, horrible reason to stop providing care that we know is effective and appropriate. My question for Dr. and Jean Summers is whether you believe a medical home model would work or could be helpful to veterans like Daniel. We know that um, many of our post 9 11 veterans face co occurring disorders PTS, TBI, anxiety, depression, physical maladies. Would a medical home model have been a model that may have worked better for Daniel than what he faced? No, I, absolutely. Um, as, da as Daniel's irritable bowel syndrome um, worsened, he didn't feel he could physically leave the house. Um, I, I can't imagine that embarrassment. And then, as Howard mentioned, um, at the time, Phoenix had the um, speed trap set up on the major highway to get from his home to the Phoenix VA, so he actually had to find a way to get off of the highway so that the flashing lights would not affect him. So absolutely, I, I can see that it would have been very helpful to him just to have the privacy uh, uh, capability. I, I completely agree. I, I think um, not only the medical home model, but what we talked about, the uh, ability within the facility for the different people because of his IBS and his TBI and his PTSD, you're being treated as, as we learned um, here, the term being in silos. Mm -hmm. and, and what you have to do is you have to get out of the silos and you have to combine resources, combine knowledge. And uh, we have heard of programs such as was mentioned that are very successful where people can have problems and you for whatever reason have an optometrist or an ophthalmologist in there and they say, well, you know, it sounds like it's not this, but it's this and, and something that you might not have thought of. So the
the medical home model, the ability to create these panels of care, I think anything like that would be overwhelmingly positive. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, while Mr. Benishik has already left, I do want to take a moment just to thank him for co-sponsoring legislation that we drafted with the summer specifically to address the issue of service members who have served in classified settings and who need appropriate care when they return to the VA. And I want to thank the subcommittee and the committee for um, supporting um, just a part of the solution to this issue. Thank you. I yield back my time. Thank you very much.